In this video, I'm going to show you how you can self-host N8N on LSTO. As you can see, LSTO is a fully managed DevOps platform, and it simplifies deploying open source software applications like N8N in the cloud. By that, I mean it handles the installation, the configuration, the automatic updates, the security patches of your application and your server, so you can focus on actually using the software for what you need it for. These guys don't actually host the application for you. They manage the deployment of the application on infrastructure. So you still need to choose whether you want it hosted on AWS, DigitalOcean, Hetzner, Lionode, etc. Because Alestio brings in a layer in between the application and the infrastructure, it means that it's good for no coders to get set up with self-hosting. You don't need to actually get into the terminal and start deploying Git repositories. So to get started, you can sign up for a free trial or just log in once you have an account. So I already have a Flowwise instance up and running here, but let's create a new service. And then you can just search for N8N, which is there, and click Select. And from here, then, you just need to choose a cloud provider and then choose what region you want your application hosted. So from a data security perspective, you might need this hosted within the EU or within the US. So you can choose the locations here. So you can also see how much it's gonna cost on the right-hand side here. So estimated monthly price. Um, and then as you change cloud provider, or change region or plan, that's all gonna change. So for this, I'm gonna choose Hetzner. This is a budget option within Europe. I'll choose the German data center. I leave it at the smaller service plan as well. So this will cost me around $15 a month. And up on the right hand side here, you can choose which version of NNN you want to install. So we'll just keep this at the latest version and then just click next. And then you can configure your application and your instance. So you have an option to configure a network volume, but you don't really need it for kind of a basic implementation of NHN. Then you also have other advanced configuration options, such as when you want software upgrades to be installed, because that might require a level of downtime as well. If you do want to actually SSH into this instance, you can set your SSH keys there. You can always do this after it's set up as well. So depending on how mission critical this application is going to be, you can purchase support to reflect that. Because I'm just testing things out here at the moment, I'm just going to choose level one support. It's a three-day response time in reality. I think it's a lot faster than that, but you are limited to email support. Okay, so I'm going to click create service. And then you can see it's deploying the service. Okay, and that's starting up now. I found when I created the account initially, there was a little bit of a delay in getting the account set up. I think when I logged my payment card against the account, I think they just go through standard security procedures, which took some time. It might depend on uh, the time of day that you actually set up your account. So if you click in, you can see at the moment the service has been deployed, but I can already take you through some of the elements that you'll see here. So. You have an overview. So here you'll be able to access the URL of your N8N application. And then a lot of what we've just set there in terms of the software version, the service plan, support levels, the location is all here and can be modified or upgraded. You can add a custom domain if you want. And again, you can change the times of software upgrades or, or operating system upgrades within these sections here. Great, so our service is now up and running, as you can see there. I'll go through the rest of these tabs in a couple of minutes. But if you just click on display admin UI, and that's then gonna load up the URL and you'll have your username and password as well and then you can easily copy them out. So we'll just click into this. If you'd like to level up your AI agents and automations, then check out the link in the description to our community, the AI Automators, where we have a large library of system templates, active discussion boards. We host a number of tech support workshops every week to help members out. And we also have a number of courses to help you level up your N8N or make.com skills. And then here is our N8N app. So you set up your owner account and I've generated a password and then you can click next. And that's it, password saved. So at the moment you can get these kind of additional paid features for free forever if you sign up to their email list. I'm going to do this because the workflow history, execution search, and advanced debugging features are brilliant. We use them a lot in N8N Cloud. So I've entered my application key and it has been confirmed. I don't think this is actually technically necessary. So if you view all plans, they have these self-hosted plans, like the free version, because you're self-hosted, you can do whatever you want with it. But then if you wanted the more enterprise-y kind of features like collaborating on workflows, single sign-on, LDAP, stuff like that, then you do need the, the higher up plans. From here, I can now set up my workflows. So maybe we'll just come in and do a, a chat trigger. Then we'll do, let's say, an AI agent, call a tools agent, you know, trigger a model. Maybe that'll be, let's say, OpenAI. You can create your credentials. So this is my OpenAI account, which has successfully tested. I think this is the real benefit of hosting with the likes of LS.io or the likes of Render. The server is configured to work specifically for N8N. So this is like an N8N image. So like everything, like the firewall is set up, whatever the application requirements are, are being met by these images. So, so stuff should just work the way it's working here. So memory, I can choose Windows buffer memory, which is in the instance. We'll save that. Let's give it a quick test. We'll just say hello. And there's our answer. You know, and stuff like you can make the chat publicly available. And to do that, of course, we need to activate the scenario. So there's our chat. And there's your answer. And then, you know, you can put in authentication. So it could just be basic auth. We'll just do test test as a 
an example, and there's your basic auth. So all of this is configured with these images, so you don't need to spend any time actually within the infrastructure, which is great. So then to look at some of the other features here, we've gone through this page, and everything you need is in this display admin UI. So you may want to change version, let's say. So you may need to go to the beta version to access a new feature. You may need to downgrade, for example, if something is no longer working in the newer stable version. If you hit an error, you can reboot, reset, restart the instance. You can restart the software itself. You can look at app logs to see is there any specific error that's showing up because sometimes larger workflows can throw errors, particularly if you start kind of maxing out on memory and stuff like that. So good to see that there. You can access the disk if needed. So they have this kind of files explorer UI that you can kind of work through and look at the actual folder structure. You can SSH in via terminal as well. Then in terms of backups, it's always good when you're self-hosted to actually take regular backups. So you have automated snapshots here. Good to get them off disk as well, because if this thing crashes, you will lose your backups if they're only stored on the disk. So uh, good to get that remote backup set up. And you have a couple of options there. One is AWS S3. And you can take manual backups every now and again just to get kind of snapshots. Then you can get key metrics just to see are your workflows really stressing out the infrastructure. All of that is there. You can uh, monitor how the server is progressing. And if there has been any downtime, you can uh, check it out here. So there we go. Then in terms of logs, you can stream logs if you need them. Sometimes if you are hitting errors and you don't know what's going on, it is useful to see the server logs. It's very advanced, but at the same time, you do have access to it here. So you have a full audit trail of, of people's access within the platform. You have access to the firewall if for whatever reason, messages aren't getting in or getting out of the application. And one thing that's really, really useful here is the Nginx configuration. So if we just show config here, now, I really wouldn't go messing with this unless you know what you're doing, but I have found that I have needed to extend timeouts of workflows, um, and I've done this here. And finally, you can enable alerts as well. So if certain thresholds are hit in terms of you know CPU usage or memory capacity, then you'll be able to get kind of email notifications of that, and you can go in and take some kind of changes to resolve the issue. So this is more if you're running this in production and it's mission critical and you need to get notified if there's downtime in the service or uh, pending downtime. And that's it. It's pretty easy to set up. Most of this you will just never need. Usually then it's just a case of jumping headfirst into the application and just using it the way you would normally use it. And probably the main ones you're going to use are maybe changing software version of NHN or maybe just rebooting or restarting the actual infrastructure itself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.